Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Argus European Products Update with me, Thomas Warner. The invasion of Ukraine is battering the European energy markets, bringing prices to levels not seen since the global financial crisis of 2008. All the talk in the markets is about what happens next. So in this week's update, I'll be sitting down with Argus refining and diesel expert Benedict George to get his take on what we can expect here in Europe. But first, let's have a quick look at why prices here in Europe have reacted so strongly to the prospect of lower supply from Russia. Firstly, Russia has become one of Europe's most important suppliers in recent years, delivering around a fifth of Europe's crude oil and around a third of its natural gas. Both streams are needed to run Europe's oil refineries, while natural gas is also used to power many European homes. Secondly, in addition to using Russian crude oil and natural gas to run the European refineries that supply us with vital transport fuels, Europe also imports additional transport fuels from Russia as well. Thirdly, several of the most important European energy companies are withdrawing from the Russian market, but so far there is no coherent plan for replacing all the lost energy. Taken together, these factors more than explain why I was happy back in January to predict that European national governments would be very reluctant to place sanctions directly on Russian energy. But with many majors already stepping back from Russian cargoes, even without sanctions being directly in place, I decided to sit down for a fascinating conversation with our resident diesel and refining expert, Benedict George, to get his thoughts on where Europe goes from here. Um, so for the benefit of our, of our audience here, uh, I wonder if you could run us through what's actually happened in the, uh, the oil markets since all of this started uh, really coming to the fore last week? Well, the main thing that's happened is that traders have been thrown into a state of extreme uncertainty because a number of sanctions have already been put in place, obviously, but um, there is as yet no widespread ban on crude oil or refined oil product imports into the EU from Russia. But traders are beginning to price in the possibility or even likelihood that those kind of bans will come into effect in the coming week, month. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows. Um, the financial sanctions are themselves causing problems because importers into Europe are struggling to find banks that are prepared to work with Russian banks. And so, for example, I had a diesel trader telling us that he had spoken to seven different banks and none of them were prepared to finance the purchase of Russian material. Um, people are concerned that if they agree a deal for Russian material, by the time it actually reaches them, they won't be allowed to unload it. Um, some people in the market are saying they're not touching any Russian material. Other people are saying they would take Russian material if they could, but they can't get the logistics to work. And at the same time, we have other companies who are appearing to continue to trade as much as possible with Russia um, because in a sense this kind of situation is to their benefit. They can make a lot of profit in the situation where they become one of the only people who are willing to trade on a very profitable route. Uh, what have you seen in the diesel market so far as a result of uh, what's been happening in the Ukraine? The market in Europe is heavily heavily dependent on Russian diesel and uh, it would be a sea change in the European diesel market if they were not actually able to get any Russian diesel. So the market's finding ways to get this product in anyway. So there are still cargoes carrying Russian diesel. There are tankers with these cargoes making their way to European ports with every intention of, of unloading these cargoes and, and that material currently looks like it will it will end up in, in European pumps. Um, pending further sanctions. At the moment, it actually looks like the, uh, the main effect of all this will be that the trading companies that are still willing to deal with Russian entities, whether that's because they're able to uh, pay for this product in cash rather than relying on banks to be involved. Banks are currently stepping back from the whole situation, but these trading companies, it's looking like will benefit uh, tremendously from the situation because they can buy the Russian product cheaply and they can sell it uh, at the elevated prices to importers. So we're still seeing significant flows of Russian product into Europe. 
um, but not at the same level that we would see under normal circumstances. So where is the rest of the shortfall going to come from? Well, there are a number of possibilities. In short, the answer is probably Saudi Arabia. The Saudi Arabia currently has quite a lot of spare refining capacity. Its refineries are not running at anything like full capacity. Um, and Saudi Arabia is also bringing new refining capacity online. So its ability to supply diesel to Europe, uh, to supply more diesel than it currently does to Europe, is significant. More, for example, than India. So Saudi Arabia and India are the two largest suppliers of diesel to Europe after Russia. Russia is by far the largest. Saudi Arabia and India are next. Indian refineries are running at around 100% of capacity already. And India is selling diesel into Southeast Asia, to Australia, to East Africa. So there doesn't seem to be much room to import more diesel from India. So it looks like Saudi Arabia. The other Middle East suppliers like the UAE, for example, uh, Kuwait is bringing an enormous new refinery online this year as well. So if this situation does continue for six months a year, I mean, we just have no idea really at the moment, but if that is how this plays out, I think we will see a lot more diesel coming over from the Middle East. Uh, and this will perhaps be to the benefit of those producers. A certain amount more diesel will come from the US as well, but Saudi Arabia is probably in pole position to, to step into the gap left by Russia. And Saudi Arabia is in the, also in the very strong position of having a very low cost of crude extraction itself. Yes, exactly. Um, so Europe is now, Europe has much less uh, access, reduced access to crude in a scenario where Russian crude imports are, are cut off. Uh, currently, or pre-Ukraine crisis, uh, Russia provides around a fifth of the crude oil being refined in Europe. So there's obviously an enormous gap to fill if that's cut off crude prices for European refiners will be heavily increased. Uh, and this is all to the benefit of Saudi Arabia and so on, as you say, um, who can continue to refine their cheap oil and sell the product into, into, uh, into Europe. But the message from OPEC so far, I think some people would have expected OPEC to respond to the crisis by increasing their crude oil output more quickly in order to reap the reward of higher crude oil prices. Uh, but the indication from their meeting was that they would not accelerate their output hike at all. They would continue with uh, their scheduled monthly increases. Uh, and I think uh, some OPEC oil ministers <coughs> said that they thought the higher crude oil price did not re reflect a shortage of crude oil in the market, but rather sentiment and geopolitical tension. I don't know how seriously the market takes that if Russian crude oil supply is interrupted. Obviously, there will be a shortage of crude globally, but uh, it remains to be seen. Now, on to the cost of um, road fuels. Can you see any outcome from what's happening here that doesn't involve European motorists and people who like heating their homes in any which way uh, from paying much, much more for their energy in the medium term? The limited interruption, to be honest, that we're seeing so far in Russian uh, oil supply and gas supply is already hugely increasing energy prices in the wholesale markets. And um, I can't see how that would not translate into much higher retail prices without very extensive and expensive intervention by Western, by European governments. The, uh, the natural gas price which uh, reached an all-time high in December, so high that uh, some European energy companies were asking to be bailed out by the government. Natural gas prices are now higher than they were then. So, and it's not even the winter. I mean, if, if this situation persists until the winter, without very rapid and also expensive investment in new infrastructure by European governments, uh, if this situation were to carry on into the winter, energy prices would be unfeasibly high, I think, for, for most consumers. 
but I, I think it would, tran it would translate into a huge fiscal cost for, for governments because governments would not be able to accept this impact on the public. Because governments, of the possibility of unrest? Because of the possibility of unrest. I mean, in the first instance, because, because uh, democratic governments would just come under so much pressure to, uh, to rescue the poorest people from, from uh, poverty. Um, we had a little look into what goes into making fuel prices at the pump, because there are a few separate ingredients, aren't there? Now, you obviously have various national taxes. I'm not a tax expert myself. I don't know if cutting fuel duty is more difficult now because we have this uh, pandemic recovery, but in any case, uh, it's going to have anyway a limited impact. Mm. Um, so I suppose we're really just hoping that the Saudis are going to come through for us. But I mean, I, in diesel at least, I think it's important to bear in mind, even the Saudis coming through for us is an answer to how Europe continues to consume diesel in the way that it does at the moment. It doesn't keep prices down. I mean, diesel prices will be much, much higher, even in the scenario where Saudi Arabia supplies it, because Europe is competing with buyers around the world for that same Saudi diesel. The, uh, I mean, Southeast Asia demand is booming and they want to import a lot of diesel and th they will be bidding for, that, for those same Saudi barrels with us. Um, if Europe were to replace all of the diesel that it gets from Russia with Saudi and Indian diesel, they would need to triple their diesel imports from those two countries and they would need to import almost all of the diesel that those two countries export. So that doesn't happen without a huge increase in the price that the Europeans are paying. So if Europe is having to compete for refined product cargoes with all of these other global production areas, would it not make sense to simply take this opportunity to fire up all of those refineries which have been taken offline since the beginning of the pandemic and have a renaissance of um, European production? It sounds like a good idea and a lot of people in the market have been asking the question and I have actually uh, emailed some of these companies asking them if this is on their agenda. Um, but the strange thing is, which has been noted to me by traders in the market even before uh, the, U the Ukraine crisis escalated, um, despite the shortage in fuels that we're seeing in Europe, particularly in diesel, refining economics are still not promising because the crisis has not only increased fuel prices but has also hugely increased natural gas prices and natural gas feeds heavily into refinery costs. Without diesel prices rising a lot more quickly than natural gas prices and I'm not sure that we're seeing that discrepancy, they're both going up at the same time, Refiners are really struggling to make money. There's not really an incentive for them to increase throughput in the units that are running, and there's certainly not an incentive for them to, to restart units that are offline. So we're in the situation now in which the cost of crude oil is going to be going up because we can't buy any from Russia. So that is making life more difficult for the refiners, and all that cost is going to be passed on to end users. So the feedstock cost is very high for them, price goes up. They're also having to pay more for the natural gas, which is absolutely crucial for running the refinery. So that's adding more cost. And so then you could say, all right, well, let's not do that much refining, which I guess is what is happening. And then you have to import product. But guess what? You can't get that from Russia either because there are fears of sanctions or sanctions themselves. And so you've got three factors coming together to drastically ramp up the cost of fuels here in Europe at a time when they were, all, they were already at record highs. Exactly. Thanks very much for tuning in. If you found the video interesting, please like and share it. And I'll see you again next time for another edition of the Argus European Products Update.